السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اسٹوڈنٹس ٹوڈے ول بی لرننگ اباؤٹ دا سیل میمبرین سی ان پریویس کلاس یو ہیو لرنڈ اباؤٹ واٹ دا ڈفرنٹ ٹائپس آف سیلس آر اینڈ ہاؤ اے پلانٹ سیل از ڈفرنٹ فرام اینیمل سیل سی وی آلسو لرن دیٹ اے سیل ہیز تھری بیسک کمپوننٹس وچ از کامن ان موسٹ آف دا آرگینزمس واٹ آر دوز دیٹ از دا سیل میمبرین cytoplasm and the nucleus so let's know first about a cell membrane so this cell membrane you can imagine first a cell as a huge factory so if a huge factory is there it should also have a tight security right so this cell membrane can be considered as the security person or the gatekeeper who checks or controls what is going to enter inside and what's going to live from there so the security person is going to monitor who's going to enter if they are going to enter through which way they have some specialized parts like the gateway for vips if you have special id card you will gain an entry if you don't you have to take a regular route for the entry right now this is a cell membrane typical cell membrane it is made up of lipid bilayer two layers which is made up of proteins and certain amount of carbohydrates now it also has the special gate for the entry of vip as i said special proteins which wo- they want to enter they can enter the enter through this layers now what is the cell membrane does first of all it's going to keep the internal contents separate from external environment and second it's going to act as a semi permeable membrane which is going to allow only those molecules that are required for the cell and whatever is not required can be diffused or out or thrown out of the cell membrane so the cell membrane is going to be acting as a protective layer apart from giving the shape it is the most flexible layer the cell can have the next important component of a factory is the cytoplasm now this cytoplasm is you can say that this is the central section of the factory where all the other activities are running around so it is basically a jelly like substance which keeps all the other organelles intact and it also assist them in moving the contents from one location to other location where it is required and third the cytoplasm since it is made up of most of water some ions and other dissolved proteins it is a very good place for the cellular function or most of the enzymatic reactions can take place in this region now whatever the waste it can also be removed from the cytoplasm so we know the cytoplasm is going to separate the contents from the cell membrane and keeps it within this place and it also has the nucleus which is bounded by a nuclear membrane right now let's move on to the next organelle the nucleus the the boss of the cell of the boss of the factory which gives instruction as to what has to be done when it has to be done and how much it has to be done so the nucleus has the information to synthesize proteins for the body of a cell of an organism whichever it is required if you fall sick there are most of the cells that die by defending with respect to bacteria or virus that has to be regenerated resynthesized so the proteins are required for repairing damaged things and replacing the muscle cells and all those content that will give lot of energy for the body now this proteins are also important components that will help in transportation of your oxygen to different parts of the body now where these proteins are present in the nucleus they are associated with the endoplasmic reticulum 
Now let's come to the main part of the nucleus. As I said, it's going to act as a control center. It does have other information like how a child will look, whether it's going to look like father or mother. The genes that are present in the parents can be transferred to the next generation because of this important structure that is the DNA which is present in the nucleus of a cell. As you know, this all these organelles, whichever we have studied, are double membraned. Now let's see where the proteins are synthesized. So this is the machine that is present in the factory. What is the job of this machine? To keep on synthesizing proteins based on the instruction of the nucleus. So whenever nucleus sends information that this part of this body requires more protein as the muscle is actively working it requires more protein so as the information goes this is going to synthesize the proteins and the place where it is synthesized are ribosomes ribosomes are synthesized in endoplasmic reticulum once it is synthesized it is transported then this endoplasmic reticulum again it's a double membrane structure which is associated with the this ribosomes at one place which we term as rough endoplasmic reticulum at certain place it is not at all connected with the ribosome which gives a smooth appearance therefore we call that as smooth endoplasmic reticulum now next uh, important uh, component is golgi apparatus now as we have seen that protein is synthesized at one place it has to be transported to other place that transportation was done by endoplasmic reticulum just like the bus or the car which ferries the passenger from one place to another this endoplasmic reticulum does now what is the role of golgi complex from the endoplasmic reticulum the ribosomes whatever they are going to synthesize protein is being transported to this place golgi complex here the proteins if they are not having a proper structure it will be modified trimming will be done and it will be packed in a beautiful way in a form of external protective covering just like if any fragile things are there they have extra packing so that it does not break so this packing and where it has to be delivered is done in golgi complex we can consider this uh, golgi complex as the post office once it receives the letter it has to be dispatched to the address where it belongs to so same job is done by this golgi apparatus the most energetic component of the cell is mitochondria here you can consider this mitochondria as the powerhouse of the cell what it does it is acting like the electrical plant where more lot of electricity is generated likewise more energy is generated by oxidation of food and that energy is stored in the form of atp whenever a cell requires that breaks down to release energy this again is made up of double layer outer and inner inner has foldings which we call as cristae then the space between this is termed as interspace and it has matrix the fluid content is present the enzymes and all those important reaction that cell can undergo will be present here it has its own dna the lysosome it is considered as the suicide bag of the cell what it does is any cell that is of no use for the activity or if the cell is old enough damage it will be taken up by this lysosome and it will be broken down broken down into a smaller components by the help of enzymes and then it will be excreted out similar way if any pathogen or bacteria if it is encountered it will be subjected to this hydrolytic digestion in the lysosome therefore it is going to act as a suicide bag by removing all the stuff that is not required if sometimes the cell has damage that entire cell will be digested 
So centrioles, where does this belong to? Plant or animal? We know it is specific only with respect to animal cells. They are in the form of cylindrical structures made of, of protein. The main job of them is to help the cell during cell division. There are two uh, centrioles which are present in animal cells. They, they form spindle fibers and which will separate the chromosome during cell division. Now this is the most important component of a plant which distinguishes a cell of animal and plant. What is this? This is the cell wall, the external boundary, the external compound wall of a factory which has the extra protective coating. We can see this is made up of cellulose, most of the dead cell component and it is highly permeable. Anything can enter and exit this membrane. It is made up of a primary and secondary wall and few spaces in between so that there is a connectivity or a, we can say that there are small, small spaces where it particles can gain entry and easily it can exit out. Now, the, what is the role of the cell wall? First of all, it's going to provide the support for the plant. Second, it's going to give a firm structure for the plant strength. And it also prevents the plant from external injury. The central vacuole, this is most prominent in plant cells and it has all the important stuff like the large amount of water, the stores of uh, nutrients that is required for the cell and sometimes even the pigments can be present in this vacuole. When the cell requires, it can release and shrink in the size. So if a plant is having upright structure, if the leaves are having upright structure, that means the vacuole is full and that gives some pressure which holds the plant or gives the plant proper shape. And this vacuole can also release unwanted stuff of the cell. The finally, where the plants make the food, the kitchen of the plant is leaf and leaves have this chloroplast, right? and almost all the cell has and this chloroplast what is what it does is it is the site for photosynthesis plants prepare their food by using carbon dioxide and water with the help of sunlight to give the sugars or carbohydrates which will be later utilized this is having a stock of coins which we call as thylakoid separated by the lamina, internal structure as stoma which is fluid filled, outer membrane and inner membrane, all this organs are double membrane. Now finally it's a time for you to recollect things till now whatever was done and try to analyze what's, what are the difference between each and everything, how you can relate Frame the questions by yourself and try to answer it. And this is the type of cell you're going to identify and label it. Apart from that, there are questions. Just answer it. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you have understood. If any doubts, you can re-watch the video and get back. Thank you.